What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's your favorite cancer and cringing causing appliance microwave and for today's video we're going to be looking at the designer notes for the year 3 season 2.2 patch. Now yesterday the Ubisoft dev team did not ask me anything on the official Rainbow Six Siege reddit page. So I read through and the community asked them a bunch of questions. I'm going to have it all summarized up for you after I get done with these designer notes. But before I get into that make sure you guys leave a like, check out the merchandise and uh, subscribe if you like this type of news content. And let's get right into the intro that's so cringy and bad boosting microwave subscribe now regarding some of these big changes they say that they don't use the data by itself like the charts they said that they look at weird things in the data and they confirm with the community and the pros so they don't just listen to the pros or the community they listen to everybody like all together they also look at the pick rate and win rate and ranked and the pro league and their top priorities are overpowered operators and weak operators take a back seat. So keep that in mind when I go through all these changes. All right, for the first thing we see here, we got a attacker's win rate delta per operator versus pick rate. Basically, this is the diamond and platinum PC ranks for the year three patch 2.0. Essentially, the win delta is the average win ratio when an operator is picked minus the average win ratio when an operator isn't picked. And obviously the pick rate explains itself. Here we can see Fink is like completely off the chart. She even has her own number because she's higher than 3.0%. And we can see Ash to the far right just completely overpowered and too strong and there isn't any changes coming to ash as of lately some of the people asked this on the official reddit page saying like hey is there any changes coming to ash you can see that she's clearly way too overpowered and ubisoft basically said that she's so fun to play uh they've already nerfed her weapon they don't really know what else to do to her so they're just going to kind of keep her there we can see that twitch is on the right hand side too and she's also getting a uh, damage reduction we're going to talk about that here in a minute some key things here to note is that lion blitz iq blackbeard and uh glass are on the the underpicked and too strong category, which basically says that they're really good whenever they're picked, but they're not picked too much. Now on the right-hand side, we can see that Thermite and Hibana are overpicked and too weak. Now this basically is a zero-sum game for a one team to win, one team must lose, and you're always gonna have a Thermite, Hibana, and a Mira pretty much because they're essential to every single strategy. So officially they're gonna be weird because they're always picked because you need them, but they're always gonna lose as well. So I wouldn't really worry about the overpicked too weak category down there. Now scrolling down to the defenders, you can see that Rook, Kavera, and Alibi are on the underpicked too strong category while Ella, Vigil, and uh, Legion are in the overpick too strong category. Now Jaeger and Bandit are pretty much essential to every single uh, defense. You're always going to need somebody to stop the Thermites or Habanas and you're always going to need somebody to stop the Smokes and the Grenades and they're three speeds so I believe that they're balanced and Ubisoft agrees with that. They did say that no changes were coming to Jaeger and Bandit and I agree with that. I think they're completely fine as is but if you look in the bottom left hand corner you can see Mute all there by his loans himself and on the Ask Me Anything they basically said that they're currently working on a mute buff and it's not increasing the mute jammer radius and that they will have more details to come soon now i don't know what they're going to be doing i'm really excited about the mute change he has a really good weapon and c4 maybe like a global silence because pretty much whenever he puts down his jammers i mean that that's it he's done i mean he, yeah again he's got his weapons and stuff but he doesn't have any aoe abilities i would really 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 like to see an aoe silence ability pretty much you can't use any gadgets on the attacking team for like three seconds or whatever so that way you can dead stop a push now the bottom right hand corner we can see mira i've already talked about that with the Hibana and Thermite. A little quick thing I noticed about Mira, they said that they want possible alternatives to her. Essentially saying that she's too good and they want to make operators that can kind of rival her. Now what's really alarming is you can see Castle, Capkin, and Frost down the bottom left. They don't really know what to do with them yet. There are some changes. Again, I'm going to be talking about that really soon. They're just really not sure what to do with this whole trap stuff because it's too binary. They don't like that somebody can just come in and then just instantly die to a trap because it's pretty much over. It's just, it's just too easy. So they want to kind of mix it up a little bit, which is what they talked about earlier. Now this little snapshot of all the operators essentially tells me that the meta is to slow down the attacking uh, forces instead of just outright killing them. You have Legion, Smoke, Maestro, and Echo kind of around the same area. Along with Valkyrie and Pulse, they're basically gathering information, slowing down the push, and denying the plan instead of just outright killing them. Which is very true in the higher ranks. Alright, for the big changes that we have, now these were 100% coming your way. We talked about some of these in the TTS, you know, they, they might happen, but these are 100% happening, so get ready for them. The first thing we're talking about is Finca. Basically, her uh, ability is going down from 20 seconds to 10 seconds is basically reduced in half. She's also gaining frag grenades instead of stun grenades. The smoke gas canister damage modifier is basically going from 2 times to 1.5. Now you used to not be able to run through the gas damage while you were Finka. It would instantly kill you within like uh, 1 second or 2 seconds. It was just like boom, nappy nap. Well now after the changes you are allowed to run through it as long as there's no barbed wire there. Which will help out shields tremendously. Speaking of shields, the aim down sights modifier from the adrenaline rush has been reduced from negative 50 to negative 20. 
25. This is a really big hit to shield users because whenever we face cheaters and such like that, we always had a Finca and everybody had shields and you were able to get those snap headshots off of. So I believe that that's a really good change. You know, you, you got the uh, smoke gas canister damage taken off, but then you also got the ADS time taken off as well. So I believe that balances it out. Now, a lot of people are pretty upset about this whole frag grenade, you know, taking it from IQ and giving it to Finca. I believe that this is uh, their way of trying to make her a little bit better. You can see here that their justification on it was that they're trying to make it a bit more appealing in terms of her utility while not making her significantly strong. Now, you guys remember last year, IQ actually got frag grenades and she's been holding on to them because the community didn't think she was strong enough. But since Vigil, Legion, Echo, uh, Maestro, and Valkyrie and all these operators like that that use gadgets have been released, IQ's become increasingly strong. So they're going to go ahead and take away those frag grenades, hand them to Fink, and hopefully increase that uh, pick rate amongst some of the Diamond and Pro players. Now, I get a lot of questions like, Mike, wait, what do you think about the IQ frag grenade nerf? Do you, do you agree with it? Yes, I, I actually do because... IQ was a one-stop shop operator. She's basically this operator that's a three-speed, has a really good gun, has an ACOG, you know, goes really fast. She could see a lot of the operators and gadgets, and she has frag grenades. She could pretty much do everything. Now, another change coming your way is the electronic detection range has been reduced from 20 meters to 15. Now, you won't be able to stand on top of the uh, roof of cafe and see all the way down into mining, see if there's a pulse watching the red stairs or anything. And I think that's a really good change because, again, I feel that IQ is just, uh, she has everything that you need to disable a uh, team. Now, Ubisoft is also giving an example here saying that we observe that she is sometimes picked in pro league even when a Valkyrie and Echo are banned, which leads us to believe that she is too good of a choice in too many situations. Essentially, she's a great operator for everything, which is what I was talking about earlier. Now, I do agree that she shouldn't have frag grenades, but the Claymore uh, is a little bit different. I really wish she would have stun grenades instead of a Claymore because, again, I feel that the Claymore is a little bit more supportive role. One thing that troubles me is that you're able to see somebody on their phone with her gadget and then you're able to frag them out from underneath or above. But then you have operators like Glass, which have smokes and and they utilize its own ability. So like, it's a little bit counterintuitive to me. They're basically nerfing her because they're saying that they're too overpowered, but yet Glass uh, has his own smokes to push aside. It's just a little bit weird. Speaking of Glass, his OTS damage is being reduced from 85 to 71. That's right, guys, give, give, give a round of applause. This is the first nerf we've seen to Glass in a long time. Now, normally Ubisoft just goes off and randomly buffs Glass. I mean, they've actually injected him into the meta the past few seasons by giving him uh, increased fire rate. He, can, he has thermal scopes. He can see through smokes and all this crazy stuff. Stuff. Well, this is the first patch that I've seen that they're actually nerfing him. Their justification for this is basically saying that Glass is too strong in every situation and in the pro league, which is indicated by his constant pick and ban rate, which we wanted to reduce his damage to make him a little bit more situational. Now, I'm really happy about this change. And another change I'm super happy about is the Black Bear nerf. Thank you, Ubisoft gods. Now, I know you guys are probably sitting there thinking, Microwave, stop complaining about Blackbeard. He's easy. You just shoot him in the balls. That's all you got to do. Just avoid the head, Microwave. It's just so easy. It's the easiest eel of your life. And while I can kind of agree to that to a certain circumstance, I believe that there's no reason to introduce an operator with a shield and AR in front of his face whenever the game is built around one headshot kill mechanics. It just kind of baffles me that they would just build this whole game with that in mind and then all of a sudden they're just like, well, I'll just put a shield in front of his face. Easy easy operator. The MK-17 damage is being increased from 42 to 49. That is not that big of a deal. I mean, I would really like to see a lot more people use it, but the big change here is that the SR-25 damage is going from 72 to 61. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever played against a professional Blackbeard or anything, but uh, the SR-25, which is the DMR, uh, and a face shield just make for a deadly combo. You just can't beat them. They're just too good. Also, they're reducing the hit points on the rifle shield from 60 to 50. It's a slight nerf. It's not that big of a deal, and also there is a 30% reduction in movement speed whenever the rifle shield is equipped. Basically, he's going to he's gonna move a little bit faster. Ubisoft believes that he's in a good place in terms of power, and they don't want to make him stronger, but they believe that the SR-25 is favored over the MK-17, and they want to try to balance that out a little bit. Now, I talked about a Twitch nerf earlier. They are reducing the FAMAS damage from 40 to 37. They're saying here that Twitch currently has a 60-ish percent pick rate in ranked, and that she's similar to Ash. A lot of people like to play her. She's really fun to play, and they want to kind of keep it that way, so the only way they can see to keep her fun and keep her balance is to nerf the FAMAS damage, which I don't really think that's a big deal because, I mean, the FAMAS has an insane fire rate and it's all about headshots, so I don't really care about the damage too much. And last patch, we had the Twitch Shock drone go from like 10 shocks to 5, so she's already got a nerf and this is to make her a little bit more balanced. Alright, for our next big change, Jackal the Foot Fetish Boy is having his scanning distance of footsteps increase from 5 meters to 8. Now, I'm really excited about this change. I don't know how many times I'll walk up to a door as close as I can. I can't really scan it because it's just a little bit too far away. I get closer to the door 
door and then boom, I get I get nappy napped. So this is a very welcoming player comfort change to me. Now for the next thing I wanna talk about is Frost. Now you guys don't know, I have this awesome merchandise. You guys should definitely go buy it. We got the Frost Super 90 t-shirts and sweaters and R prints and all that good stuff. Check out a link down below. Here's a, here's a quick look at what it looks like. So the Frost SMG damage is going up from 43 to 45 and the Super 90 baby is going up from 32 to 35. They believe that she's uh, extremely weak and they need to increase her power while she is fun. Her SMG is a little bit too difficult to play and she wants to make it easier for those who've already mastered it. They reiterated that they're not going to make her shotgun overpowered like it used to be in Operation Black Ice, you know, the Sniper 90 essentially. But after reading some of the questions on the Ask Me Anything on Reddit, they did say that more changes are coming that they can't talk about and they feel that her traps are really binary, meaning that they have either massive impact or zero, which I totally agree with. I don't know how many times I get like two or three kills and then like the next game I get absolutely none. So she's in a really weird place along with Capkin, which is indicated by the graph that we showed earlier. So I'm excited for the big changes coming her way. I wonder what they're going to be. Hmm. Another big change that I didn't really think was going to be big at the time, but after playing on the TTS, I believe that Dokubi gaining stun grenades over her claymore is a really big deal. Now I know Dokubi's usually put with glass and she's able to grab the smoke grenades, get the plan off, and glass is able to cover her. But I believe these stun grenades are a bit much because she could basically, you know, ring a foam. Brrr, brrr, Hello? And then all of a sudden throw stun grenades at you and she knows where you're at so you're done. You can't see, you can't hear. You got a phone ringing, you got the SMG-12 which is not getting nerfed. I don't know what's up with that. Speaking of weapon nerfs, they did say on the Reddit Ask Me Anything that they're not doing any more weapon changes until the new recoil system is live. So don't expect any nerfs or anything like that coming your way lately. Now that's it for all the operator changes. One thing that they're changing is the barbed wire slowing effect is being increased from 45 to 50%. Now it used to be 50% but they knocked it down. It used to be three hits, now it's the two hits and I believe that this is a really good change. It was changed due to lesion. They believe that lesion and the barbed wire was just way too much slowing effect and I'm really happy about this 5% uh, increase because it'll slow down the meta a little bit more and give defenders a little bit more time to uh, assess the situation. All right, let's talk about the last part of this video. It's gonna be called the current status. Basically, we're gonna talk about Alibi, Maestro and a few other operators. So the first thing we're we'll talking about is Alibi and they believe that she is really strong in rank but she's uh hasn't been used that much in the pro league. They said that they need more data to determine why and how they can go about making making adjustments to compensate. Now with the recent release of Maestro, they're really happy with how Maestro is performing in both in ranked and professional play. They say it might be a little bit too strong in the pro league, but they're not really sure because again, they don't have that much data to work with. So give us some time before they make any changes. Now let's go back to Frost and let's talk about Capkin. Ubisoft said that they observed in the past few updates that Capkin and Frost tend to move up and down on the wind delta access in tandem. They do understand that they go hand in hand, but they're not sure what's caused the sudden drop in the wind delta and they're looking to investigate it further to figure it out. Well, Ubisoft, I have the answer to that for you. Essentially, the cheaters have been rampant over the past two months, and uh, yeah, we're going to go on a little rant about this. The only way to combat cheating in Rainbow Six Siege as a player is to use Frost and Capkin. Essentially, they're so focused on getting headshots on the player, they don't really notice the traps around them. So a lot of the higher ranked Diamond and Platinum players were pulling out Frost to uh, thwart the cheaters. And a lot of the times, we wouldn't win because they would just instantly give us, right? Thus, it increased the pick rate, but also decreased the win ratio. And the last thing on the dev blog we're going to talk about is Castle. They're saying that there's drastic changes coming to Castle, but they don't have an ETA on it, which is estimated time average. They did say on the Reddit that they believe he's way too niche and they need to make him less situational. They don't like the fact that Castle can prevent key doorways and prevent the team from rotating and they believe it's a massive disadvantage. They do believe that Castle is really good for pros, but it's really bad for unorganized teams like Ranked and uh, Casual. Now there was a ton of questions about Castle on the Reddit and they kept talking about how they prevented team rotations. A lot of the community members were saying just make the castle go all the way down to the ground and prevents the drones from going through and I think that's a great suggestion. However, with the recent releases of holograms and now that we're going a little bit more sci-fi into this game, I believe this image here sums up the way that I would like to see castle buffed. Here on the left hand side it's basically castled off, a player cannot get through it unless he rips it down. Well on the right hand side you can see it's a hologram kind of blocking the doorway where teams can go through it but not opponents. Yes you'll be able to see through it but you won't be able to go through it all, that includes drones as well. I think this would be a really awesome change to castle. And again, I know it's not realistic microwave, but I think it'd be a really balanced change and a welcome change that comes to castle. Well, that's it for the dev blog. Some cool things that I noticed on the Reddit page, somebody asked about Tachanka. Ubisoft basically said in a whole bunch of sentences that he needs a complete overhaul and that he's taking a backseat until they have time to work on him. They're also saying that there's more changes to come with Thatcher since Twitch is basically the better operator in my opinion and has claymores with that as well. So they're saying that making him destroy gadgets was too binary and that they wanted to make him more strategic 
magic by disabling them instead of outright removing the gadgets that get hit by the EMP. So they are looking at the way that Thatcher interacts with the enemy gadgets, and there might be other changes to come later on. Now, I know a lot of people hate Lion, but they're saying that a lot of big changes are planned that they can't really talk about right now. They're saying that his gadget feels that it either gives no info or it gives all the info necessary to win the round, and it's difficult to balance. Now, I don't think Lion's a really big problem right now. I'm really happy with the way they changed him, and it kind of evened him out a little bit, but I'm excited to see what these big changes are. Now, earlier, looking back at that graph, we saw that Capital was like far bottom left. He was like completely useless. Well, they believe that his fire darts are lacking and the area effect is too small, which makes him difficult to use. Some suggestions would be like make an impact to where as soon as you fire the bolt, a little explosion happens. And there were other suggestions to how to make him better and they haven't clarified on how they want to do that yet. So stay tuned for that. And they want to bring back the blue smoke for Capital, but they believe that the game engine might be a little bit difficult to work with that. Speaking about smokes, the smoke gas canisters for the operator are going to be a little bit different in terms of visibility. Basically, they're saying that there's a big difference between the smoke gas canisters and the regular smokes, the, vi you know, the visibility through it. Sometimes you can see all the way through the smokes and sometimes you can't. So they want to kind of balance that out and make it easier. Now, they also mentioned that the LMGs have a big room to play with. Essentially, nobody using the pro league and nobody really uses them in the uh, diamond ranks except for uh, Maestro, of course, because that's his best weapon because somebody complained about the hip fire being way too good on Maestro, which you can see in this little clip here by my artist just wrecking the team. Now, to go ahead and wrap up this video, there are no silencer reworks planned as of yet, and there are no changes to the shield and handgun hip fire for a while. They're basically saying that the pistol and shield is a little bit wonky and they want to make it a little bit better, but there are no plans of that as yet. They're also looking into ways of making shotguns more globally viable, but there aren't any top priorities yet, and that they're not increasing the amount of operators that have frag grenades, which I totally agree with. Now, for the last question that I saw on here, somebody asked, do they plan on slowing down the meta? Their response is that they don't have any indication that the meta is faster, and they said, just wait for the next season winky face. I wonder what that could mean. Hmm. All right, that's it for me, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you guys leave a like if you enjoy the content. Also, let me know in the comments down below what your favorite change or nerf is into the game that's coming up. I hope to see you guys in the next video where I stuff aluminum inside myself and turn on the chaos mode. Don't do it. Don't do it, Todd. You have much to live for. She, she yeah, says she's sorry, it. but she'll make it up to you. So... Oh no. Oh no. Bomb locations are secure. Where are they?